Hello again. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video. I have been in uh, transition to a new job and uh, moving uh, to a new city in Texas. And for the past three or four months, uh, I have uh, not bothered uh, to make any kind of videos. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit and then go into what I found on the internet, which I really liked. Uh, this is using uh, this gentleman's code right here, uh, Google Assistant Windows. Uh, so this is essentially running the Google, uh, it's an example of the Google Assistant running in a WPF application and uh, I'm obviously a C-sharp guy and I have examples that I uh, have in previous videos that use C-sharp so this was appealing to me uh, the direction I'm heading is to um, on my pre previous videos you spoke uh, into the microphone and you called a Google API and then you got text back and that was like half of the the piece uh, the other half of the piece is you if you want to do some kind of companion AI which is what I want to do uh, when you're trying to talk to the computer uh, is you want to hear a voice back well you want to hear a voice back and you also want to get the text back at the same time uh, from what I understand the Google Assistant is going to allow you to do that uh, and what from what I understand you are supposed to be able to send text to the Google Assistant and then it's going to interpret that and send a voice response back as well as the text it thought it heard Anyway, uh, this is uh, 2018 uh, and it's March uh, the 3rd and we'll see what happens. The first thing you got to do is you've got to get the Google Assistant running in C Sharp um, and if you want to do it my way and uh, that's what this gentleman did. So I'm just going to run the app uh, uh, again with anything any of these Google API's uh, you have to go through uh, uh, a lot of headache to set up the Google Assistant uh, application project in your uh, Google console he goes into some of that detail uh, you you are not going to pull be able to pull this code down and compile it and have your Google Assistant uh, and try to resell it and make a billion dollars that ain't gonna happen but what you are going to be able to do is at least be able to wrap your mind around uh, what calls you need to make and the process you need to go through uh, to get something like this up and running and this gentleman was nice enough to post this on github uh, and I thought I'd make a video of it uh, and uh, post it to everybody and say hey th this is a starting point if, if you want to go in this direction so um, one thing that uh, you need to be uh, made aware of is that when you do set up your Google account your Google Assistant account uh, and get everything turned on uh, this code uh, goes out and it tries to connect into your account uh, and pull your information out so it can uh, pass it to this the Google Assistant and um, that's one thing that needs to be clarified you you will occasionally see the the Chrome browser pop up and it will ask you if it's okay if this app uh, tries to do that and uh, now keep in mind that this this code is trying to connect to your Google Assistant project that you have cre created previously uh, really co confusing stuff but uh, it's pretty cool I'm gonna run it and um, what you're gonna see right off the bat is this little window and you see Google sign in 
and after the window loaded it signed in as me and this is what I look like in 1980 and uh, pulled the picture down and it displays it in this Windows form now you might be wondering well where's you know okay Google uh, where's all that that's not how this works uh, this works like the other Google Assistant projects uh, to where um, you press a button it's going to use N audio to record what you say it's going to send it off to Google uh, just like my previous examples the difference is, is it's going to go through the Google Assistant it's going to do NLP natural language processing on your uh, voice and then it's going to uh, figure out what that means do something about it and then it's going to create a voice wave and send it back to your machine and play it so here we go what's the price of Bitcoin 1 BTC is approximately 11,177 United States dollars okay that was an example uh, that was pretty slick uh, I just pressed the button, recorded something, and sent it off. Uh, but as you can see, this app is doing a lot more than what uh, my app was doing. Uh, but I don't have control, really, of what's uh, coming back. I'm talking to something, and then I'm getting a recording back. Uh, let's do another one. Who is Mr. T? According to Wikipedia, Lawrence Tarot, known professionally as Mr. T, is an American actor and retired professional wrestler known for his roles as B.A. Baracus in the 1980s television series The A-Team and as boxer Clubber Lang in the 1982 film Rocky III. Okay, so you, uh, that was actually the question I asked this last night when my uh, son and I were uh, wondering about some things and I said, well, I watched this and it didn't get it right but uh, I guess I uh, asked it differently so um, that was that uh, when you pull this code down uh, you're gonna have to um, uh, ignore this project this is a console application version that I was working on when I was just trying to get this example to work uh, and then I just decided, well, I I'm just going to run this guy's code and see what happened, what happens. Um, so uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, when you go through this process of setting up your uh, Google Assistant account, uh, you're going to have to set up credentials and uh, you're going to have to download them uh, and put them in this directory where this code can find them and uh, he goes into a little bit of uh, detail on how to do that uh, the uh, other thing is is this is this project uses the grpc uh, api that google has and it's it's an open standard but you have to have you have to generate uh, these classes now the project uh, the way it's set up seemed to have already done that uh, so uh, or it may have a batch file and they're doing it I was looking around I couldn't see how he was generating this stuff but uh, he that is a lot of legwork that you don't have to do because this guy figured it out uh, you could see it's got a huge amount of references so you have to obviously update your package um, uh, so it will download all the SDK dependencies and then the N audio dependencies um, you know good luck but uh, the point I'm making why I'm making this video is to not take credit for this guy's code uh, he I think he did a great job uh, the point is is for this video is to point people in the right direction uh, as of uh, 2018 uh, in early March that you if you're doing this stuff in C sharp if you want to do embedded um, 
Google Assistant project, this I think is a good example. Other than it's WPF, uh, and I know WPF enough to where I can uh, get the thing to work. I he had uh, there's two things in here. One is the keyboard hook that he puts in place. You don't need that. I took you commented that out, and he also tries to do a tray app, uh, and uh, you don't necessarily need that. That's why I was going to make this uh, console version. But I stuck with his WPF simply because of all the events that are going on. So what's happening is is that with these, this generated user uh, uh, class is that it's going to make a call when the form loads. When this main form loads. And then when that code runs it's going to fire a vent that's going to come back into this app and it's going to pass those credentials to the assistant and uh, we have this on state changed uh, you don't need to worry about that uh, on assistant changed um, blah 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 this is the event that's going to get called because of this on load so it's going to go out. I don't necessarily I don't necessarily know how to make this run uh, with different types of credentials. Uh, you can look in this code and see what's going on. But this call right here eventually calls into here, and then resets the assistant, and then it tells the assistant it reinitializes it with the uh, channel credentials that it acquired so it's going into your account um, uh, to run this stuff and anybody else could probably run it but the google chrome browser if i haven't already said this is going to pop up and it's going to say hey uh, the, your app wants to make this connection and get you know your information so just be forewarned uh, that button that you saw that you press uh, that's what happens in here uh, and then you basically the, you start this new conversation then you tell an audio uh, to play some kind of notification and uh, he's got some list box stuff in here that I don't even think works uh, but again, uh, this is a quick and dirty video that I'm making uh, to point people kind of in the direction where um, if you want to follow me where I want to go, uh, the I think the Google Assistant route, if you want to do Alexa, do Alexa. Uh, but uh, here's some code with the Google uh, Assistant in C sharp using an audio so it's pretty pretty close to the code I've already got the difference is is we're getting we can talk to the computer and then we're getting a response back uh, from the system and we're getting a nice uh, generated voice uh, which is coming back and that's super powerful now what uh, isn't powerful is we really don't have control of uh, the textual response that's coming back. We, w we want the WAV file of the nice lady's voice coming back to talk to us, but we also want to know uh, what the text was. And the reason why is, is that I want, let's say for example, to ask the computer just you know, as a test, you know, how much memory is on my computer? What type of CPU is on my computer? You know, all the things that uh, you and I both know that we can click on 50 million buttons uh, somewhere on whatever version of the operating system uh, to get that information. But that is just one example of being able to ask an assistant, your own personal assistant on your own personal computer uh, you want this information about something. So th this is a little bit of a deviation from uh, the Alexa and the Google Assistant to where you know they're trying to uh, turn your lights on and off, uh, which is great. Um, 
or they're trying to do something else that's you know calling a web hook and uh, things like that so um, you know uh, that's not quite the direction I want to go to uh, I might want to control a audio device I might want to play audio uh, I might want to orchestrate music or something like that and be able to communicate to the computer uh, and have voice commands and or have gesture uh, commands so um, anyway uh, thanks for listening I you know I realize that you're staring at this uh, screen that has all this code that's barely moving around um, but this is just something that I thought I would put out there and um, it's this other guy's code uh, it's on uh, github uh, and it does work you could pull it down you can update the packages uh, you can follow his instructions uh, getting started right in here to get your JSON uh, and it will work and it will get you going so I appreciate this guy uh, for doing this I hope he doesn't mind me uh, making a video about it but maybe uh, that's what he should have done uh, because it is a, a great starting point uh, if you want to do Google Assistant on Windows 10 uh, on um, uh, your own machine anyway I'm just going to upload this video. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I've got some OpenCV TensorFlow uh, object detection work that I have gotten further along with. I'm going to try to do a video on that. And one of these days, I'll uh, hopefully have all this stuff merged together. Thanks a lot.